thing on? Is this thing on? Welcome to living with Marcy L. Lord, I don't know what is up. I was wearing a hat and I think it over dried my scalp, but whatever. Life goes on. How are y'all doing? How are y'all feeling? It is cold in New York, is all I can say. Oh my goodness. I wore the Orloff Star of the Season today, uh, or yesterday, I should say. It was cold, and it performed well. It really did perform well. It, uh, I could smell it. Other people could smell it. Got some compliments. Not a lot, but eh, a few. So I was thinking, I had made the post, I, you, I think you guys saw the reel, I hope you saw the reel, I'm really proud of the reel, it was fun, uh, it was an unboxing reel. And so on it, when you go to Fragrantica, it mentions that it is a Dominique Ropion creation. Hey, how are you, John? What's going on? Random Fragrance, Tony, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo te sientes? ¿Y qué hay, mi amigo? Uh, I was talking about what I wore yesterday, which was the star of the season. I don't know if you guys saw the reel. What's going on, KK Ferns? How are you? Long time no see. Um, and so that fragrance, if you go to Fragrantica, the perfume mirror that is credited for it is Dominique Ropion. How are you feeling, John? What is going on, my friend? What is new? How are you feeling? Talk to me. What fra By the way, guys, what fragrances did you wear today? Uh, or yesterday, I should say. Are you wearing a fragrance right now? Sand Hunter! How are you? How are you? What's up? What fragrances are you wearing? What fragrances did you wear? Been a hot, yes, it's been a hot minute, bro. It's been a hot minute, but I'm happy that you're here. Like legit, legit, I'm happy that you're here. Um, so, uh, so that's the thing. On on Fragrantica, they give Dominique Ropion the credit for the fragrance, but if you go to the actual website Orlov, they actually say it's Quentin Biche, right? Uh, neither one is wrong. Okay, neither one is wrong. Uh, the thing is that Dominique Ropion is the original creator of the fragrance. Years passed, and because you guys know that there are different materials that can no longer be used, etc., etc., uh, they had to reformulate, right? So the, for that fragrance, they got Quentin Beach to do the reformulation, essentially to try and recreate what Dominique Ropion did with materials that are usable now. And I'd say Quentin Beach did a really good job. I have a friend, he was saying, um, well, why wouldn't they just use Dominique Ropion to uh, reformulate? You know, we won't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe Gabe Oppenheim can do a little bit of research and find out and put us on to why. <laughs> have any of you gotten to read the, uh, the book, The Ghost Perfumer? This, your scent of the day was green Irish tobacco. Who makes that? Green Irish tobacco. Who makes that? Have been wearing a Calvin Klein obsession for men because it's kind of cold as of late. And I don't know. I just like the scent. Let me tell you something. I was having a conversation two weeks ago or a week and a half ago about obsession. Obsession is a wonderful fragrance. It is a fragrance, kind of like what I mentioned today, from Happy Land Studios, beautiful. So that means it's probably a mix of Green Irish Tweed and something else, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, Tony. Um, obsession, I was speaking with somebody and I was saying how Obsession is this kind of fragrance that when it first came out, oh my goodness, we could not get enough of it. Like nobody tired from it. And I think you fast forward to now, a few decades later, people still don't get tired of it. And the people who are not um, fragrance enthusiasts still fawn over the scent because it is a wonderful ambric scent that just works good in any weather, I think, right? Um, Dunhill, century for the nighttime. Hey, I'm here for it. Dunhill, man, that 1996. It takes me back to 1996. So Dunhill, uh, their cigarettes. And then fragrances, and it was like, when you wore Dunhill fragrance, you smelled rich. You know what I mean? Like, I remember the first time I smelled Dunhill, and I had to ask the person, what were they wearing? And they were like, oh, it's Dunhill. 
And I was like, goodness, it just sounds rich. You know what I mean? It sounds rich. So tonight I'm wearing Gravitas. Gravitas by Norton and uh, Norton and Will. I always confuse the name, but it's the one that Dan makes. You know, I love it. It's more of a creamy smell. Really good. Absolutely. Oh, so it is that. It is that mix. Wonderful. I'm going to check it out. Uh, Tammy? T uh, Tammy? No. Uh, Sarah from Glam talks about Happy Land. I'm going to start checking them out. Uh, there's a few of these uh, clone houses that I'm going to be checking out. They do have their own blends. And I feel that if they are able to develop something that is a hybrid, then that's props to them. You know what I mean? It's not really, it's no longer really a clone. It's it's something that they've remixed. OMG, Dunhill International cigarettes are like 15 USD a pack. Or mm-hmm. They're expensive. They were in 1996. They were very expensive too. You know what I mean? I remember. I remember. So it's like Dunhill. Dunhill. But they, it's, they've always been kind of like the classy. You know, the, the classy, the posh, and all of that wonderful stuff. So today, I wanted to kind of smell... Hey, bro, what's going on? How are you feeling? What is new? Guess que pas? Guess que pas? What are you up to? How's the family? You know, I had my um, SAD on, Sun on Sunday, my special assembly day, and it was wonderful, wonderful, super encouraging. I really liked it. So right now I'm going to be talking about Paco Rabanne Black Excess Potion, the potion. So Black Excess Potion, the top notes are juniper, the mid notes are cashmere wood, worm wood, and the base is rum and labdanum. So essentially it should be a boozy type fragrance. I don't know. I know I had purchased the Black Excess. I didn't purchase the Black Excess Potion. Black Excess Potion has like a red thing in the center. I ordered the Black Excess, which is like the octagon or whatever type shape uh, bottle it is. So let's see. This one I actually got from someone who is no longer, uh, no longer has an uh, Instagram page. Her name was Mandis Cave. She's a wonderful, wonderful young lady. Very kind, very sweet, very loving, and very uh, generous. She would, you know, invite and encourage anyone from the fragrance community. She was a sweetheart. And it smells good. It definitely is a Paco Rabanne. Definitely is a Paco Rabanne. It's totally a Paco Rabanne. You do get that juniper in the beginning, which is interesting because the juniper uh, gives me almost saffron energy with thyme smell that's what it does but it smells good it smells good i wouldn't mind uh you know having a full bottle of it do any of you have any paco raban fragrances do you own any paco raban fragrances um so i'll tell you i love paco raban's one million there's a story um so this is 2012 do you guys remember victor and rolf put out um spice bomb after flower bomb was a hit right and so i go to macy's and i buy the spice bomb and it was expensive like for no reason right i buy it i liked how it smelled and then um i had a bad experience so i go across the street to perfumania at that time they had perfumania across the street you refuse to buy those i need to know the story you please tell me the story please if you need to get on here, join and I will hear. I need to know why you will not buy Paco Rabanne. What, one million Lucky. Tony, that is totally awesome. I know that Lucky is very popular. Um, I got to tell you, Lucky, for some reason, is, is like age specific. It's age specific. You have a lot of them, bro. There you go. There you go. Tell me which one's your, your favorite. Um, Lucky is age specific because I feel that there is a cutoff age for Lucky. I think the cutoff age might be like 35 or maybe 38. I'm 43. I smelled it. Couldn't understand it. You know, I just couldn't understand. Okay, no problem. I could not understand it. But... Um, so what I do is I go to Perfumania and I was there, I'm talking to the girl and I'm telling her, yeah, let me try what's, whatever new fragrances you have. Buddy, what is up, my friend? How are you? 
How are you feeling? What is going on? Centralize. Centralize is in that in the room. What is going on, my friend? How are you feeling? <laughs> okay. Oh, Tony says, I smelled the original a few years back and I didn't like it because it smelled like an eraser. That is interesting. Which one smelled like an eraser? The, the excess or one of the one million? It's 6 a.m. over there. Oh, so we're 6. Yeah, we're, there's a difference of, uh, what, five hours maybe because it's 102. It's 1 o'clock, sorry, here. That's awesome. Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> oh, one million smelled like an eraser to you. That's fascinating. I wonder what note in there created that that kind of an experience for you i wonder so i go across the street to perfumania and the girl shows me different fragrances but then she also lets me smell one million and when i smelled it i promise you i was like what because it's like twice the size of the the spice bomb and it was for like half the price and to my nose it smelled exactly like spice bomb Tiwa, Tiwa today, when I Tiwa, that's a unity. What's up, Tiwa? Oh, it's seven over there. Adagodi, 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 how are you, my love? How are you? How are you feeling? Well, good morning to you, too. Good morning, good morning. It's a good day. For singing a song and it's a good day For moving along, yes it's a good day How could anything go wrong? It's a good day from morning to night You have all the one million lines except the OG Interesting, is that because you don't care for it? So that was, that's the story. So I got the original uh, one million at Perfumania And I never looked back to Rip Victor and Rolf That was it <laughs> Thank you very much. But you know what? I am one of those people that as soon as 12 o'clock hits and it's 12 a.m., I consider it the next day and I consider it morning. My son and I argue about that his whole life. He's like, until the sun comes up, it's still night. And I'm like, no, 12 a.m. is the marker. Once 12 a.m. is here, it's morning. Always. Too many people wear it. I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Oh, T was saying hi to Tony. So yes, I hear what, and that is something else. That's another topic for conversation, guys. And I would like to know your opinion. Sauvage, one million. These are fragrances that are excellent. They're excellent. And a lot of people wear them. So what happens is, and I would, uh, people will down them or play them or ignore them because they feel that a lot of other people wear it. And so, you know, it, it, there's no uniqueness to it. What do you guys think about that? I am the kind of person that I will rock a fragrance. I don't care. I do not care. You know what I mean? Oh, I like that Tony sang that. Beautiful. Thank you, Tiwa. Thank you. Yeah, so I love them. I love them. I, and there's a fragrance. Listen, I guess my story would be easier to type. I'm just not really into sweet fragrances. One million isn't bad, but the flankers I do not like at all or as much. And I like Spice Bomb much more. Dior Sauvage, I rather own. Awesome. So you know what? And listen, I respect that. I respect that. Okay, there you go. So it's too sweet. Listen, there's people who can just not rock with sweet fragrances. There's people who just cannot rock with floral fragrances. It's okay. It's okay. I get it. I get it. You'd rather own Dior Sauvage. And that's okay too. You know what I mean? So I like Dior Sauvage. I like Dior Sauvage and I like to give it as a gift too. Um, let me see. Did I bring it with me? So you know what fragrance I recently smelled and it's been out forever? Okay, so John says, if I like it, I like it. Doesn't matter if a million people wear it or if I'm the only one wearing it, LOL. Yeah, wonderful. That's it, that's it, I, I believe that. But I also get the point of view of there's too many people wearing it. If you guys know me, you know that I like to understand different uh, points of views and different uh, 
uh, angles, right? So it's like my cousin John. He does not like to wear stuff that everybody else wears, but he does like Aventus. You know what I mean? Which I found fascinating. <laughs> Tiwa said, I hope I win tonight. <laughs> Dior Sauvage Elixir. Hey, Thomas, what is up? How are you feeling? Elixir, Elixir is, um, I, haven't, I haven't smelled it, have I? I had a, a sample of it. It didn't leave a lasting impression. I had it, I smelled a sample of it, and it did not leave a lasting impression, to be honest with you. So it's like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this excess smells really good. Excess potion smells absolutely delicious. What is going on, Thomas? How are you feeling? This is the scent that I smelled for the first time today. Nautica Voyage. Because I heard so much about it. And I was like, I need to get my nose on it and try it. I brought Elixir from my dad. Oh, did you? Do you know if he liked it? Tiwa says she got it for her pops. I hope he liked it. I hope you liked it. So yeah, those are those are things that I was thinking about. Now this is another fragrance that is old, and a lot of people wear it, but it smells so good. I sprayed it on yesterday. I was on a live conversing with um, Fat Boy. Fat Boy, I think his name is Fat Boy Fragrances. My name is horrible. I'm gonna be actually having a conversation with him tomorrow. Um, and the other one is Joey Cannoli. And so I sprayed it and I smelled it and I loved it. I could not believe how good it is. And another one is Eye Smells. This is the Eye Smells, like iPhone Eye Smells. Let me see. Oh, that question was about what I thought you were going to say. Oh. <laughs> yes, for the first time, Tony. It was my first time smelling this consciously. You know, maybe I'd smelled it on someone else wearing it, but this was the first time. And it is a wonderful scent. It is a wonderful fragrance. It's, the performance is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I sprayed it on my arm and I, the next morning I'm still smelling it. Like not wafts, like smelling it. I was like, that's awesome. Nordica is good, Tiwa. Nordica Voyage, I am not a fan. Okay, k okay, you know what? That lets me know kind of where your nose goes and leans. I'm glad to hear that, Thomas. I'm glad to hear you're fine. That is super awesome, super important. Nordica is a classic and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Fat boy, yes, he is an awesome person. Hey, Nisi, how are you, my love? How are you feeling? Um, random. There you go. Yes, 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 yes. So I really enjoy, I really enjoy wearing it and it is one that I will continue to wear. It is one that I will continue to wear. Um, so last year, you guys remember, I just started, uh, restarted my fragrance journey. Actually it was November of 2020, but I started taking it serious 2021. And so you know, I buy fragrances, I give them away because I didn't want to, I don't have space and I don't want to keep uh, keep a bunch of fragrances. This year, it, my behavior is a little bit different because I understand what I'm doing. I'm still blind buying, but I'm also able to make purchases, blindly buying them, but having read the notes, having read uh, uh, like comments and selecting fragrances that are actually really good that I want to um, make part of my regular rotation. I can love a fragrance, but not necessarily want to make it part of my rotation because I'm the kind of person that I don't, it, it can be from a genre that I don't like, but I will recognize if it's good or if it's not good to give as a gift, right? And so essentially that's why I purchased them, to make them as gifts or random giveaways, right? This year I'm able to actually purchase fragrances that are like you know what, I actually want this to stay. Like for example, my top three from last year are staples. Those are fragrances I'm gonna keep and I'm always gonna wear. Like it doesn't matter what decade, how old I am, they, they're gonna be in my rotation. And this year I've already found fragrances that are staples. They're gonna stay in my rotation, like as long as I'm alive, you know what I mean? For example, in the vineyard, Shelter and Perfume is gonna stay. There is um, Pulse from City Rhythms. It's gonna stay. Um, Star of the Season, it's gonna stay. Gravitas, it's going to stay. Like those are fragrances that I'm gonna be keeping and some of them I have to have like a backup for because I will not go without it. You know what I mean? 
Okay, Kiki Friend says, but Nordica Voyage is sentimental for me, though. First cologne my mom bought me. Ah, and sister bought it for her birthday recently. Oh, I love that. I like that's what I love about fragrance. There is a connection. There is a connection. There is a connection. There is a connection. I love that. John says, I saw some at backstage the other day, kicking myself for not picking it up. Hey, you know what? It wasn't the time to pick it up, John. It wasn't the time to pick it up. You're perfectly fine. Tiwa says, I bought Cremo Spice and Black Vanilla today, and my hubby, <laughs> your hubby took it from you. Let me tell you, that one is the best. So there is a, there is a uh, reviewer. His name is Fragrance Knowledge, and he was one of the first people I heard speaking about it, Cremo Spice and Black. And the way he described it, I was like, it's good. I haven't gotten it yet, but from what I heard, it is absolutely amazing. As you started, my has kind of... Oh, KK Ferns, yes, yes. As I started, yours was ending. As I started, yours was ending. But that's why I'm so happy you're here. I'm so happy. It's significant that you're here. I missed you. I, I missed you, okay? Um, so random. Tony says, my first cologne was Polo Sport. No way. Uh, back in high school. Hey, my friend, Bizarre. Sandy Fragrance, how are you feeling? Hi, Empty Sands. How are you feeling? Rosé is going to stay. Yes. Rosé. So let me tell you something. I love Rosé. I love Rosé. Rosé has the potential to stay. Rosé has the potential. Rosé has the potential to stay. Rosé has the potential to stay. So Rosé has the potential to stay. It really does. I am. It's, th it's in the um, cupboard. So I have a cupboard that is where my staples live. And so Rosé is actually in the, in, the, in the cupboard. Nordica Voyage is very sentimental to me too. Childhood memories. Thank you, Niles, for sharing that. You saw it at Walmart, Tiwa. Niles says, Cremo smells like that's, that's precisely it. I think that's why she brought it up. Because it is a spice bomb, uh, like an interpretation of it. I can still smell it on me. <laughs> I love that. I'm glad you're feeling fine, Sandy. I'm glad you're feeling fine. My first fragrance was Isi Miyake Sport. That is interesting. I will go back and get another one tomorrow. Yeah, you might as well. They're like 20 bucks, right? So you might as well. Let him stay with it. You want your man to smell good. You know what I'm saying? Let him smell good. <laughs> so KK Fern says, I think a lot have Ralph Lauren colognes in high school, but I used Axe more. I was young and stupid. No, you were not stupid. Can I tell you something? I, I come from the school or the thought, right, that... I don't, I don't knock Axe. I do not knock Axe because Axe made me smell really good for $2.99, $1.99, and sometimes two for $3. You know what I mean? Uh, it, so for me, Axe is extremely significant because it, it, it uh, how would I say? It looked out for me in a time that other fra I could not afford other fragrances. Put it like that. You know what I mean? So I forever, forever, forever am grateful to Axe for having made so many elementary schools and junior high school and high school students smell good. And I remember, I remember using Axe even when I was 23, when I would go for my salsa lessons because salsa classes were three hours. And so I, that was like, I'm not going to wear cologne. I'm going to wear Axe. Why? Because when I would spray my body with Axe, let me tell you something. Yo me pongo a sudar y estoy sudando, papá, y el olor que sale es buenísimo. Girls would be like, oh my God, let me dance with you. I'd be like, come, ven. Está bien. <laughs> Hi, Marcy. Just listening, doing paperwork, etc. Okay, thank you. Empty Sense says hello to everybody. Thank you so much. I hope I'm keeping you, we're all keeping you company while you do your paperwork. Yours was Declaration Cartier Eau de Toilette. Sandy Fragrances, guys. They, they make fragrances. Their fragrances are delicious. They have, oh, pff, when I tell you, a plethora of fragrances. And they do bespoke fragrances. So check them out. If you're not subscribed to them, check out their page. See if you like them. And if you like them, subscribe to them. I'm subscribed. I've made purchases. And this year, I'm going to make some more purchases. I'm really happy with the customer service because they tend to really... Keep in touch. So they do awesome. Props to you, Sandy. Thank you so much. Um, let me see what else. 
Tiwa says, Ralph Lauren and Tommy Girl was my perfumes. And oh, you were smelling rich. You were smelling fancy. You said, I have class. Pardonnez-moi. Qu'est-ce que vous dire? Je ne comprends pas. <laughs> do you have any favorite coffee fragrances? So, yes, I do. Favorite coffee fragrances, you'll be surprised. Many people would say, um, Black Phantom. I say Black Phantom's clone from Alexandria Fragrances called Dark Night. It is a wonderful coffee scent. Another coffee scent that I really, really grew to love. It, I'm drawing a blank. But there's a few coffee scents that I really, really like. But that's the main one, Dark Dark Night. I feel that I, that one sticks out because it really sticks out. It's one that you can get for um, $99, $100. You get 100 milliliters. And it just it projects perfectly. It creates the perfect scent bubble and sillage. And if you... Um, use more than five or six sprays of it, you are going to fill an entire hall. You know what I mean? And it's not an offensive or obscene coffee scent. It is a very, very pleasant, very respectful, very comforting coffee scent. So that's Dark Night from Alexandria Fragrances. I'm trying to remember any of the other ones that I've gone through. Um, anybody else here have any suggestions for a coffee scent? I know I, tr I tried the Acro, coffee scent it was okay but i didn't fall in love in love with it but acro makes a good coffee scent um who else just box just box has a coffee scent Jeez, drawing a blank sorry sorry john KK Fern says exactly why I thought axe and bod was great when you can't afford the real deal and you like the only uh, smart person here joke. <laughs> T.Y. says LOL and Bod too. Yes, Bod is good. Tommy Girl is a great perfume, says KK Ferns. Yes, yes, says Empty Sense. Sandy Fragrance, you're very welcome. KK Ferns, okay, lucky brand, lucky you was a great. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Bizarre says the oil roller fragrances from the hair store was a go-to back then too you is not lying you ain't never lied okay yes the rollers and i don't know how many if if it was like this where you were growing up but i grew up in the bronx and in the boogie down bronx hey john what's up in the boogie down bronx we had the um the the black men uh, selling the Egyptian musk and the different oils, like attar kind of things. Bro, like that was a lifesaver because you could buy the baby powder one. The, and those those would stay on you till you showered. And sometimes even after you showered, you still smelled it. But my favorite one was the Egyptian musk and the baby powder. But they would also be able to, uh, to clone like actual sense so if you know for five dollars you could get it the only thing was that my body was a little bit allergic to some of the materials that they would use so i couldn't do that i have a tie on just in case i do this because i have to keep my back warm i got kind of sick uh, so when i was younger i had a double pneumonia right and coming to work i was always showering literally before i leave and when you have weak lungs you cannot leave your house about an hour or less after showering. You just should not do that. And then I was doing that, I wasn't really wearing a hat and I would wear not a good scarf and I was not really protecting myself. So my left lung started acting up. So I had to really kind of do a bunch of care. So fortunately I'm good, my lung is fine. Um, but what I did, I bought a bunch of thermals, I got new scarves, I took out the winter coat, you know, I was trying to act like I was 23, I'm 43, I'm not 23. Oh, there you go, Halloween, that is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful coffee scent, you're, oh, how did I forget Halloween? Halloween, let me tell you something, Halloween gets compliments, and it's not that expensive, sometimes Fragrance Net will have it on sale, you know, um, when it's on sale, get it. I buy, last time it went on sale, I bought five, because I was like, I know I'm going to regret if I don't. The roller fragrances from here, there you go, good. 
it's subtle tobacco note and the ringing coffee note. Oh, you're, wait, which one did you mention? Okay, Sandy has one called our co oh, coffee tobacco. Coffee tobacco oud yes. Montal, Montal is another one. <gasps> How did I, you see, that's what I'm saying. I was drawing a blank. I know I have mentioned these, I have done videos for these fragrances. Montal Intense Coffee. So let me tell you, Montal Intense Coffee. What is going on, John, my brother from another mother? So it's, it's good. This is the thing. So let me tell you guys something. Montal Intense Coffee is a wonderful floral fragrance that has hints of coffee. And so when I purchased it, I was expecting this intense coffee scent, right? It did not give me intense coffee. It gave me wonderful floral with some coffee. And so what I did is I researched on the Googlers. And one of the suggestions was to purchase um, CO2 coffee extract, right? And that's what I did. I went on Amazon. I bought the CO2 coffee extract. That smells like coffee. So before I would spray the... Um, intense coffee, I would put the CO2 extract, coffee extract, and spray that on top. Let me tell you something. <laughs> it smells, that was, that was the intense that I was looking for. I remember on State Street in Chicago. I don't know that one. Is that a fragrance? KK Ferns. Well, when I said I don't like sweet fragrances, I wasn't lying. But CH Men Privé was one of my favorite fragrances because it's a tobacco fragrance. I think Salvatore Ferragamo had a cocoa scent in their arsenal. Yes, Salvatore Ferragamo. Yeah, they do. They do. It's, it's almost like tiramisu. That one is wonderful. I purchased it. That is one that I have to re-get because it is one that I want to keep. I want to put in, in, in my cupboard. Oh, Robert Graham had a coffee. Look at that. Look at that. Thank you so much, Empty Sense. It's discontinued, but you know, who knows if we can if it can be found. Beat Cafe. That's the one. Beat Cafe. Thank you so much. Beat Cafe. Salvatore Ferragamo Uomo. That's the one. Tiramisu coffee. I love it. Alchemy, Alchemia Cafium. I have never heard of that one, so I'm going to pin that one. Guys, if you want to write it down, there's a few that you can write there. Um, I, a discontinued fragrance that's sweet is also loved is Givenchy Play. Intense. Givenchy Play. I never got to smell it, but I've heard a lot about it. That is awesome. So there's another one coming up, guys, by John mentioning Crypto Mint. Who makes Crypto Mint? I know I remember reading that. Who makes... Hey, Tammy. How are you, my love? Aloha. Who makes Crypto Mint? I don't know who makes Crypto Mint. Um, so let me see. Bing bang. <laughs> Intense Cafe is my favorite fragrance ever. Great Milky Rose. The, rest the Ristretto version smells more like coffee. Oh, that's interesting. Here's another one coming at you guys. Wow. So listen, I love this. I'm telling you, teamwork makes the dream work. It's a amen. Oh, it's amen, amen. I made the best coffee girl mon spray oil last night. Yes, you did, Tammy. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Because I you know I had fun watching your show as you were making the fragrances, right? Like as you were making your it's the body sprays. You call them body sprays. I was having so much fun. I was literally living. I was like, I'm there with you as you are testing them. For some reason, I thought you were going to drink it. <laughs> I, thought, I was like, oh my goodness. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe you can, right? Essential oils. I don't, think, I don't know. I don't think they're dangerous. <laughs> but I really enjoy that. Guys, because she did post it, so check it out. Tammy Loves Fragrance. She made her own body sprays using her own oils. You can check out her episode. She did it yesterday. It was yesterday, I think. I saw it, right? Um, KK Friend says, I meant coffee, not cocoa, but it might have that scent too. Not sure anymore. Marcial, how is Halloween Man for your own words? I never smelled it. I was going to buy it. You will not regret purchasing it. You will not regret purchasing it. It is a wonderful coffee scent, and it is it has elements of sweetness, but it's not sweet. You will enjoy it. It lasts long, and um, 
I can honestly tell you, it is unique in the sense that uh, it has re it's re reminiscent and it's the DNA, you know, is specific. But it's its own smell. It's its own smell, and it's one that I do believe is um, full bottle worthy. I think so. Thank you for suggesting the vetiver. It was the perfect addition. I'm glad. I'm glad you like that. I'm glad. I'm glad. Teamwork, baby. Thank you. Halloween Man is a cheapy gem. There you go. Random fragrances said Halloween Man is a cheapy gem. Listen, I, I, I do not regret having... Per I, so why did I buy five? Because you guys know I was like... I like to do the random giveaways. And so th that, those I specifically purchased because I wanted to give away on the train in what I do IRL, Marshall Blends, random giveaways. And so if I had a good conversation or I saw somebody do something nice or there was just a connection, I would... Before I get off from the train, give it to the person. And so that was a fragrance that was absolutely nice. I was able to bump into somebody, and they gave me feedback. They loved it, and they were grateful for it. So it's nice. It's nice. Empty Sense says, I used to buy the roll-on oils from the <laughs> oh, 87, amber layered with obsession. Then off to Studio 54 with little Louis Vega. Lasted all night long. Oh, wow. So it, re it gave you full performance, right? You were able to go until four o'clock and then go to the after party and then the diner at eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm here for it. I am here for it. So guys, this week I'm going to be reading from the Perfume Companion, the definitive guide to choosing your next scent. And so I was thinking, because we were talking about coffee scents, I'm wondering, there should be like coffee scents. I would on, I, florals. I don't know how to, if they have it here. Because it's kind of the way that it's set up, there's, there's tobacco, vanilla, floral, amber. No, they don't have the coffee scents here. Or maybe they do, and I just, I'm kind of sifting, flowing through it too quickly. But what do you guys, I want to read to you from different types of their scents. Let me see. Oops, sorry. Okay, okay. Kicking First says, thank you, boss. I used to love Creed Aventus or was on that kick. So I can't stand many colognes nowadays. But I'm more for the leather frags oh nice yes this is a really awesome book i love uh, this book like i am oh i am legit in love with this book it's it's just really good and talking about a leather scent there was a few leather scents that i was talking about today again drawing a blank but the the one that i wore today which one did i put on today i put one on today that was a leather scent but it was saffron. You know the different things that are used to create leather, right? Like you can use birch tar, you can use saffron to create leather. Um, you should, you should, you should. I think you should, you will not regret it. Um, but yeah, there's different things that are used for leather and saffron is one. And I just, I find it fascinating because I always tell people saffron is the kind of material that breaks fragrances up into like, it pixelates the material, you know? I didn't get to smell passessoir. Now, passessoir is one that I love. I've smelled it in real life, you know, and I love it. It's from BDK. Accords, yes, absolutely. Leather Accords. Do you know which fragrance? People ask me, what's your favorite um, leather scent? And the answer is funny because my favorite leather scent is actually, Oh wow, the passessoir just smells so good. Oh my goodness. BDK, you guys slayed when you made passessoir. So passessoir, it opens up with mandarin orange, ginger, black pepper. It is definitely very citric. And then it goes into the quince or quince, Moroccan jasmine, orange blossom, and then cashmere, amberwood, and Singapore patchouli. It's one of those scents that, for me, definitely, you know? I don't know why I haven't purchased a full bottle of it. Maybe because I'm, I, my, the way my brain works, it's structured. It's like, this year I want to do this, and then this year I want to do that, and then next year I want... So I think 
this will probably fall somewhere into my next year uh, purchases. That's just how my brain works. Let me see. Okay, hi, Kestan. Kes how are you? Hope everything is good. Welcome to the Mar uh, Living with Marcial show. <laughs> where we are all hosts. <laughs> and I'm gonna start reading a little bit from here. So this book, The Perfume Companion, mentions different fragrances um, in different genres, right? So for example, in the vanilla genre, um, one of them that it mentions is Salamar by Guerlain. Salamar by Guerlain. I'm happy to hear that you're fine, Kestan. I'm so happy to hear that. Okay, Cake and Fern says, nah, I don't really know much about colognes to make leather notes, but sounds good. I used to use a buckle fragrance. I think it was BDK as well. There you go. BDK be doing it. Yes, Empty Sense. Absolutely. Absolutely. I am super good. I'm super good. Thank you for asking. So far, so fragrant. I cannot complain. I can't complain at all. Yeah. I was just being negligent with my, my health. I was going out right after showering in the freezing cold, which was not the smartest thing to do. So I had to rearrange and correct my schedule and my uh, behavior, but I'm doing really good now. Bizarre says, Godolphin, Ombre, Indigo, and Gucci Absolute are some of my favorite leathers. I really want to try Kinsey 10. Awesome. Oh, it is 7.30. Oh my goodness. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> you know which one, guys, you know which one is a favorite leather of mine? And now that I'm talking to you guys, I have to remember to reorder it because I finished it. Um, Rasasi Junoon Leather Oud. And so now it's called Rasasi Junoon Leather. But back in the day, it was Rasasi Junoon Leather Oud. Okay, Kaskan, but thank you so much for stopping by. I appreciate that, all right? Have a great day. Have a great day. And um, Rasasi Janun Leather was, is absolutely amazing. And how I found it was I had ordered um, Yves Saint Laurent Lhomme Intense and was underwhelmed, right? And so I just started looking for other things, and I was like, let me order this. And I ordered that. You got it, my friend. You got it. And so I ordered Rasasi Janoon Leather Oud. And that, I literally, I think I hit a high note. Because I was like, this is what I wanted from the intense. So Passe Soie, guys, is absolutely wonderful. It's a wonderful scent. I am loving it. And it's better than the first time I smelled it, which was, well, probably because I understand it better, which was like a year ago. Okay, Tony says, I just bought Armani Code Profumo, Givenchy Gentleman Boise, and samples of 1888 Sershov, Casamarotti, Mephisto, PDM, Perfumes de Mali, Cap Kaplan. Kaplan or Kalan? Because you're right, I think they do have something called Kaplan, but the one I've, I smelled is Kalan. That is wonderful. You got some really good pickups, my friend. You got some really good pickups. That is good. You smell good. You smell good. Time for some filters. Oh my goodness. How is it possible that I went so long with no filters? Let me see what else. I know I just added some. Darn it. I wonder if it's still there. Let me see. <laughs> oh, I don't think. Oh, yes. I added this one. This one is weird. It's like, what is going on? <laughs> I thought you guys might like that one. And then, of course, the famous. <laughs> hey, AR, what's up? Brown Bottle, never tried that Rasazi. I had a few of them. Yes, yes, give it a go. You will not regret that one, their Janoon line, because they have different lines. They have like a lower um, price, mid price, and higher price. The Janoon, I think, is the mid price. And I was just, you will not regret it. 
You will not regret it. KK Friends said, oh, it was Kalan. It was Kalan. Awesome. Awesome. KK Friends says, I smelled Gucci Absolute, but not all the others as much as I told Martial as his journey started. My kind of ended. I'm kind of poor again. <laughs> I'm not laughing at that you're poor again, but I'm glad that you're laughing at it. But yeah, I, I totally get you. I totally get you. Last bottle I bought was a Creed Aventus and Fragrance Ones bundle deal. Wow, that is awesome. Yeah, listen, I, I look, the way I see it, you do not have to purchase everything. You know what I mean? Me, I, I, I do, I do. What I do is I'll do... You know, I have a specific thing that I do for fragrances. So I have a, a different thing that I do to, to be able to purchase fragrances. If I ever lose that, then I just won't be purchasing fragrances. You know what I mean? I get it. I get it. So now let me read you a little bit about the vanilla fragrances that Sarah McCartney and Samantha Scriven have mentioned. The one that they speak about is Shalimar by Guerlain. And they, this is the original Outstanding Vanilla and they give it two of the euros. And so I posted today on my on the Instagram the what it means, right? The one euro, two euro, three euro, four euros. I, I post that. Shalimar was inspired by the story of Shah Jahan, better known as the emperor who was so bereft at the loss of his wife that he built her the Taj Mahal, no less. A love that epic deserves a perfume that is equally so. Created in 1925, this iconic bottle can be seen in many black and white photos of old Hollywood dressing tables. Shalimar sid sidles into the room with a deceptively fre fresh citrus opening before unleashing its mighty powers upon everyone present. A bejeweled heart of dense, dark spices crowds in with frankincense, patchouli, and vetiver. The vanilla in Shalimar is so masterfully golden and warm that vanilla dodgers should be led this way to see how it's really done. Shalimar weathers you in mystery and seduction, and once it has you, it has you forever. <laughs> Let me see. This keeps acting up. Okay. Oh, yeah. You're getting like typos. You're trying to type. Black tie is my favorite one out of date and office. Oh, okay. Okay. That's from uh, what's his face? Uh, Jeremy Fragrance. I hate typing fast. Always misspell words. It's okay. We understand you. Don't worry about it. Just tried a sample of black tie today. Uh, not my cup of tea. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. Kalan is absolutely good. Kalan, I tell people, is, you know, if you like Neroli, th this is it. My first reaction, the first time I smelled Kalan, it took me like 20 minutes to come down from the, the high that that Neroli gave me. It's just, it's, it's effervescent. It makes you feel good. It perks you up. It make, it's just, it's a wonderful scent. I really like it. Now, my son purchased it, loved it, but grew tired of it very quickly. So it depends on it depends on your nose. You know? He loves blue fragrances. Like that's what he loves. Like he loves blue fragrances. He's, he never tires of blue de Chanel. He never tires of YSLY. He just he loves blue blue fragrances. And so does his son. His little son loves blue fragrances. So I, I think it just depends on your nose. You know what I mean? So let's see what else. So we read one vanilla. What else can I read you from? Here's, oh, let's see this. This is. Woody Sense, Woody Sense. Would you like me to read you about some Woody Sense that they suggest? This is interesting. Sergio Mefiesto is okay to me. It smells like Silver Mountain water. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Mephisto smells like Silver Mountain water. Does it smell like a better version of it or is it like kind of equal? Like, Tony, tell me. That's interesting because I love Silver Mountain water. Oh, wow. Tiwa says yes. Tiwa agrees. That's fascinating. That's fascinating. So for me, I love, um, I love the Derby Clubhouse Blanche. 
from Armoff, which is a clone of that. I was having a conversation today and someone mentioned that they like the Siage. Siage is good, but it's like a power, it's like amped up, you know, it's like amped up. Oh, so they're about the same. Both of you say they're about the same. Oof, my internet is acting up. It's okay, KK Ferns. If you're not able to stay on, don't worry about it. I'm just happy you were here and I'm happy that we got to chit chat and hey, DM me, uh, and, you know, call me on the DM, whatever. Let's talk. I missed you. Okay, Kalan, I get a shampoo vibe in the beginning. You're right. That sharpness is very shampooy because I think they use kind of the same, uh, you know, they use the same materials, right, for like cleaning stuff and it's the same material. It's all fragrance. It's all fragrance. I mean, yes, to read Woody Notes. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to read this one. It's the Eau de Merveille, Eau de Merveille by Hermès. Has anybody ever smelled that? Eau de Merveille by Hermès. The Garden of Delight. Perfume, Nathalie Feistel and Ralph Schwager. Let me tell you, I, have you guys heard of Nathalie Feistel? See, I'm going to try and see if I can get her to get on for a chit-chat with me because I love her work. Her recent work has been like, Fascinating, and this one has three euros. Eau de Merveille is one of those fragrances that bottles a moment. And in this case, that moment is the air around a citrus grove with a sea breeze in your lungs and the scent of sun-kissed skin, slightly milky, like suntan lotion. Hints of spice float around like fireflies, adding to the sparkling magic. Eau de Merveilles is indeed a scent of marvels, and its flighty beauty has an effervescence that is never too light nor too heavy, wreathing you as it does in orange zest. The scent of pine trees, sea air, and the mossy finale of dried grass underfoot as you reluctantly leave this fragrant Eden. Yo, I need to get this. Has anybody smelled that one? Eau de Merveilles? I need to get that. Yo, the way they be talking about this. You're a woody chick. Hello, hello. Date for men has the same sharp opening like Kilan. Kalan. Oh, okay. Thank you, Tony. I did not know that. You know, I haven't gotten uh, ordered any of uh, Jeremy's fragrances. KK Friend says, I mean, I want to chat with you anytime. I've just been busy lately. Sorry I haven't been in fragrance community in a long, long time. It's okay. Don't worry about it. No stress, no pressure, no rush, no mess, no muss, no fuss. Uh, Empty Sense says, never try date. I'll get to it eventually. KK Friend says, but I don't think I was ever in y'all's uh, dealio. dealio. Empty Sense, uh, well... There you go. Okay, so Eau de Merveille is beautiful. One of my favorites from Hermes. Smells good on anyone. I love that. Thank you, Bizarre13495. Thank you, because that's good. There, it's so hard to make a fragrance that works with the majority of people's chemistry. You know what I mean? Like, there are some scents that smell marvelous on one person and, like, vinegar on another. So that is good. I'm going to check that out. I'm really going to check that one out. Thank you for mentioning that. I just got two samples of Jeremy's frags. Date and office. Okay, what do you think about them, Tony? I mean, didn't try Jeremy's frag. That's what Empty Sense was saying. Hey, my friend, how are you feeling? Throw another prawn on the bobby. The whole line is amazing, and the bottles are spectacular. Which one are you talking about there? Are you talking about the Jeremy fragrances? The bottles are pretty uh, basic from what I've seen. Although, let me tell you, I don't care about basic fra uh, I don't care. <laughs> there you go. What's going on, Zaharov Down Under? Say hi to Zaharov Down Under, guys. So let's see another one that is in the woody. Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo is a woody, fra is a woody fragrance. I didn't know that. I'm going to read you that one. Jimmy Choo by Jimmy Choo, okay? It goes on greenery and glamour, and it has two euros. How are you feeling? Yes, so far, so fragrant. I cannot complain. I'm feeling great. 
I'm feeling great. I was mentioning to the family, the guys here, that I had got, I had gotten myself sick because I had double pneumonia when I was younger. So my left lung has forever remained weak. And so I, in the winter, I'm not supposed to take a shower at least an hour before going out. And I was doing just that for days straight until finally my lung was like, hi, Marcial, remember me? <laughs> so I had to correct my behavior. And finally, I'm good now. So today I actually wore uh, two fragrances. So for right now, I put on the main fragrance is uh, Gravitas, Gravitas. But yesterday I was wearing, uh, I totally forgot. But I had sprayed on this one, Nautica, the night before and it lasted all day. This is Nautica Voyage and I had worn, oh, Star, Star, the one that you told me about. Star, star of the season. That was what I wore. I sprayed it everywhere for my errands. And I, so I, I wore two fragrances, essentially, yesterday. Woke up with one. <laughs> How about you? What did you wear? Let me see. Hope you're well, bro. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. The whole line is... Uh, let me see. Day to me smells kind of like Abercrombie and Fitch. Uh, first instinct extreme smells similar to my nose. That's interesting. Wonderful. Hi, GZ, down under. There you go, just a hard off. Uh, they're okay, not, I'm not paying 300 for <laughs> Well, see, that's the thing. You're absolutely right. So Jeremy's fragrances, they are expensive, but he always has like these wonderful sales where you can get it for like 70 bucks. Excuse me, Cochino, excuse me. Um, the Eau de Barbier's bottles are spectacular. Yes, I love how they look. There are two Hermes perfumes that I'm going to be getting, which is the Terre de Hermes, the Vetiver one, and now I'm going to be trying to get the Eau de Mervier. I'm interested, like super interested now in those. Uh, good day. Okay, so Z Zaharoff Down Under says, Empty Sense, good day. Hope you're well. Star of the Season. Yes, thank you for that correction. The Elixir Edition. That was the one I wore. Star of the Season Elixir Edition. Today, I, you wore Luna by Aaron Terrence Hughes. Okay, so Fantastic Voyage, guys. I don't know if you guys have uh, are following him, have seen his reviews. I love reading his reviews. One would say, he says, oh my goodness, I, they're too long. I don't think they're too long. I, they are correct. Like, they give you a proper review. And so... Um, he does really like Aaron Terrence Hughes productions, and Aaron Terrence Hughes makes wonderful fragrances. Thank you, Tiwa. I'm feeling way better. I took this weekend. I did not go outside, outside much, and if I did, I promise you, I, when I say I bundled up, I bundled up to make sure that my lungs and my chest were covered, because when you have weak lungs, you it's not just the back that you have to cover. You have to cover the chest, so it's the chest and the back that have to remain warm the entire time you're outside, so that was what I did. I made sure if I had to go out, that's what I did. Uh, here today, hot, hot, hot. A 102 Fahrenheit in Australia. Oh, wow. If we were to be able to, like, have our temperature, because right now it feels like zero here, so that would be, like, 50, and everything would be wonderful. Scent of the day was Black Orchid. Which one did you wear, Bizarre 13495? Did you wear the Parfum or did you wear the Eau de Parfum? I'm going to tell you, the Eau de Parfum, my nose cannot tolerate it, cannot handle it. But the Parfum, I can. Now, there is a 24-hour oud that Tammy Loves Fragrance introduced me to that is the best of the Black Orchid for like maybe a fifth of the price. You wore Royal Eliasab. Tell me about that, Royal. Tell me about Royal, because I have not I have not purchased or smelled it. Yes, yes, the Harav Down Under. Aaron Terrence Hughes is an amazing, amazing uh, perfume creator. And I'm so proud of his improvement. And you know, he's just he's he's growing. He's just growing in every single kind of way. Y'all getting some cold weather on the East Coast. Yes, we are. We're getting some cold weather on the East Coast. It's freezing. It's going to be below zero for a while. And that's the thing, guys. I was walking around just wearing the blazer and a hoodie and a scarf and a hat because I, I get very hot, you know, but I can't play that. I can't play that. I have to actually wear my winter coat. I have to wear the thermals, you know, whatever. Learn my lesson. I still need to get me a bottle of Aaron Terrence Hughes. Yes, Tony. Get it, get it, get it, get it. 
Start with tabak or forbidden. That's a good, thank you, thank you. So when start, when um, going into Aaron Terrence Hughes, thank you so much, uh, John, for mentioning that. Two to start with, tabak and forbidden. Tiwa says, beautiful, bold, and sexy perfumes. KK Fern says, Aaron Terrence Hughes colognes sound interesting, but hard to get. They, uh, yeah, depending where you live, they are hard to get. But if you're able to get them, wonderful, wonderful. And I don't think you will regret it. I think there's only one that wasn't a like a hit hit. But for the most part, his fragrances are just amazing. He's amazing. You know what I mean? So I'm going to read you a little bit of Jimmy Choo. Did I read that one? No. Okay. Ten years after the master himself left the company in 2001 to concentrate on shoemaking and teaching, Jimmy Choo, the brand, branched out into perfumery with this eponymous, 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 the lost my place, fragrance. The bottle, which resembles a chiseled glass bauble, was designed by Chu's muse, Tamara Mellon. Top notes of pear and patchouli set the tone for the floral, fruity journey ahead, with the first stop being creamy caramel. A popular twist, the caramel sits in the middle throughout and, while it doesn't dominate, this, would be the same with, this wouldn't be the same without it. What sets this glamorous pus apart is that it's very much a toffee gourmand, yet leafy green, sparkling citrus, and big orchids. Keep it light and unsticky enough to last from desk to disco. Darling, if you can't walk in heels, you can still strut around and jimmy chew. God, that was cute. I like that. That was cute. That was cute. You see? So they okay. John says they deliver to the U.S. from his site, or Max Aroma has them. There you go. Tiwa never heard of Aaron Terrence Hughes. Aaron Terrence Hughes is a perfumer. He is absolutely fascinating. Um, you, he has a YouTube channel. You can check him out. He also does reviews on fragrances. Um, he also works with Fragmental. Fragmental on YouTube. You will see them doing reviews together, collaborations, absolutely wonderful. It was through Fragmental that I found out about Aaron Terrence Hughes when they were doing a collaboration. Check him out, check him out. And as far as his fragrance brand, it's wonderful. It's his, his um, materials are just really good, really good. Um, Tony says, I've had a lot of people say, start with this or start with that with this one. Yeah. Zaharov says, Aaron Terrence Hughes, Hughes, I want to get Daddy, Animalix, and Deviant. Those three. Interesting. Interesting. That would be, let us know if you're able to get them and what your, what your thoughts are on them. Super fascinated. Let me see. Okay. He has, okay. So Fra Fragtastic says he has a ton of fragrances, but trust I've had at least six people get Forbidden, and everyone has loved it so far. So there you go. Forbidden is kind of like a safe buy. I like Jimmy Choo. is okay. I think the original was the only one I liked. It also reminds me uh, John Varvatos. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Okay, so Empty Sense says... Like to layer Kame shea butter and brown sugar soap with shea butter moisturizer with GZ tabak. That's interesting. With George, with the Zahara of tabak, the tabak gets muted a bit, but you can still. That is fascinating. Go for forbidden, Tony. Which one has the best leather note in uh, by him? Which one has the best leather note? Uh, you're talking about Aaron Terrence Hughes. You're asking which one has the best leather note. I, I wouldn't know. Uh, John is the John is the, the house in-house expert, but the ones that's called Cherry, I think, sounds interesting to me. Yeah, yeah, that one is like a lot of people are interested. John, I believe, was is going to get it or got it. I don't remember, but yeah, Aaron Terrence Hughes, he, he's always like coming up with new stuff. I love him. I love him. Let's see what else is here. Who here likes sandalwood fragrances? 
I like sandalwood fragrances. Um, one of my favorite sandalwood fragrances, I think Adam Malik's might have it. Oh, there you go. I don't know. He has a leather fragrance. I don't know if he has a leather fragrance. Oh, okay, there you go. So he might not have a leather fragrance. Animalix might have it because of, yeah, right? Like an animalic type of scent. I will get cherry and vanilla when they are released. There you go. There you go. There you go. Okay, Tiwa likes uh, sandalwood. So, and I'm excited to, listen, when I tell you guys I love reading John's reviews, I really do love reading his reviews. Gotta get some Z's. Always fun, Marcy. Thank you so much, Empty Scent. Big bear hug to you, okay? Take care, and we'll see you soon. We'll see you soon. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. So what are you guys' favorite sandalwood scents? Do you have any favorite sandalwood scents? Let me know, let me know, let me know. So one of my favorite sandalwood scents is actually mentioned here, and I'm going to read it to you. So... This is Sandalwood Sacré by Le Jardin Retrouvé. I love it, and it has two euros. And it's Authenticity Reborn. The work of the late Yuri Gutsatz is being continued by his son and daughter-in-law, using many of the same independently sourced ingredients and suppliers that Yuri met while working in India. As a result, Sandalwood Sacré is made by Mysore Sandalwood from the son of Yudi's original supplier in India. And thus, from sun to sun, the torch is passed on. Sandalwood Sacré opens like a powdery hippie-style patchouli before the sandalwood comes in with its unique scent of blonde wood, which pulsates with a dusty floral radiance. Gentle breeze of white musk accompany the woods like nymphs, flighting and diaphanous. With a big mossy finish that makes this a firm favorite with this chipre fan, Sandalwood Sacre is, in my opinion, and this is the opinion of Samantha Scriven, the finest sandalwood fragrance I have ever tried. And I love that. And she's absolutely correct. Sandalwood Sacre is a wonderful sandalwood scent. It is in a lane of its own. And I love that she adds this beautiful fact. So Michelle uh, is the son of Yuri Gutsatz. And Yuri Gutsatz, if you didn't know this, Yuri Gutsatz, Le Jardin Retrouvé, is the first niche firm to be legally established as a niche firm. 1975. So before he did it, no one had established their niche firm. So they are the original niche house. Le Jardin Retrouvé. And that Sandal Sacré and Rose Trocadero are my favorites. I have a ton of fragrance from them, but those are the ones I fell in love with. Zaharov Down Under, Zaharov Signature for Om, Australian Sandalwood. Look at that. There you go. Oh, th soon I'm going to be ordering the, um, the other Zahara fragrances. So I did the Tabak, I did the Rosé, and now I think there's three more, correct me if I'm wrong, that are the Signature uh, line, and those are the ones I'm going to be getting soon. I can't wait to smell them. Uh, KK Fern says, Norwegian Wood by Canon. It's like dated though, as old as my dad at least, since Canon, the original one, was his favorite. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So let me tell you, I just did a video and I was talking about that where things are dated. Yeah, you smell them and you can tell what year or what decade they were made. But that doesn't mean a, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Like, for example, the late 80s and the 90s had a lot of geranium and a lot of... Um, Carnation, right? So you smell those notes and you're like, yeah, this is the 90s, you know? But I love that. And I think that it's something that to a person who's never really smelled it, it's wonderful. You know, it's a good introduction. So that was the reading for today, guys. The, the conversation was absolutely wonderful. I really enjoyed you guys' company. I hope you enjoyed my company, <laughs> you know? Uh, hopefully we'll do this again tomorrow have some more conversations if you have any questions remember sorry you can always put them up here and we will talk I will pose some questions I don't know what sense I'll be trying tomorrow but the week the book of the week is this one 
okay? The book of the week is this one. Um, I still do have the book um, No Visible Bruises, which has to deal with domestic violence. If you want me to read that one, you guys can let me know if you want me to read that one. But for now, The Perfume Companion is the one I'm going to be reading. Molecule 04, Nirvana Black, CDG Concrete are my favorite sandal woods. Okay, there you go. So that's... Those are those are three more. Molecule four. I didn't know Molecule four was sandalwood. Yeah, like they just they 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 those fragrances are just one specific thing. Like I know that Molecule one was um, what Isoe Super or something like that. And so okay, so now I know Molecule four is a straight straight sandalwood. Thank you for sharing that. I did not know that, and now I know. And knowing is half the battle. <laughs> Goodbye, my lovely fragrance blenders. So Random says fragrance. Yeah, I just looked at all the ATH frags, and not one has leather in it. There you go. Thank you, Tiwa, for saying awesome. KK Ferns says Norwegian wood top notes are anise. Grapefruit, lemon, and lime. Middle notes are woody notes, lavender, incense, and jasmine. Base notes are sandalwood, vanilla, cedar, musk, and Haitian vetiver. Thank you so much. Uh, no prawns for tea. No prawns. Okay, no prawns. <laughs> so don't throw another prawn on the bobby. I'll see. And smell you soon. Ciao. Love you guys from the heart, all right? Bye-bye.